जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार श्रीवास आदि गौर भक्त वृंदा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा थैंक यू फॉर ज्वाइनिंग वी आर कंटिन्यूंग अवर डिस्कशन ऑन द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ भगवत गीता इन द लास्ट सेशन वी टॉक्ट अबाउट हाउ इफ अ लिविंग एंटिटी डिसाइड्स टू गो टू द हायर प्लैनेटरी सिस्टम बेसिकली गोइंग टू द प्लैनेटरी सिस्टम ऑफ द डेमी गॉड्स द स्वर्ग लोका देन दैट इज पॉसिबल एंड द ईजी वे इज वन नीड टू ओनली वर्शिप द पर्टिकुलर डेमी गॉड ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर प्लानट इन दैट वे वन कैन गो टू द मून प्लानट सन प्लानट और एनी अदर हायर प्लानटरी सिस्टम सो देर इज अ प्रोसेस गिवन इन द वेदास एंड वी वेन वी सिंपली फॉलो दैट प्रोसेस देन वी कैन गो टू दो प्लानट्स विच इज द प्लानट्स ऑफ द डेमी गॉड्स so further prabhupa says that yet bhagavad gita does not advise us to go to the planets in this material world because even if we go to the brahma loka to the highest planet to some sort of mechanical contrivances maybe by traveling for 40000 years and who would uh, and who would live that long we still find the material inconveniences of birth death old age and disease but one who wants to approach the supreme planet krishna loka or any other planet within the spiritual sky will not meet with these material inconveniences so which inconveniences prabhupada is talking about those are this birth death old age and disease this is there this is the part of the package this is there in the material world wherever you go within this universe this package is you have to go through the cycle of birth death old age and disease and then there are three more you know this called as tapatraya misery is caused by one's own body and mind misery is caused by other living entities and misery is caused by the by the devatas you know this is called as tapatraya so in total like there are seven miseries which every one or every living entity in this material world has to go through or basically the soul has to go through all this uh, all the souls you know it doesn't matter from which country you know they all have to go through this nobody wants it and nobody can avoid it everybody has to go through it you know so these are the problems staying in this material world it is temporary the this two words krishna uses one is dukhalaya other is asaswatam dukhalaya means uh, it's a place where alaya means granthalaya is a library actually a place where you get the books then bhojanalaya a place where you get food so similarly dukhalaya is a place of misery so this material world is a place of misery and the second term which is used by krishna is asaswatam it is temporary is temporary in nature it's there for some time and the period depends you know the some uh, the time definition is different on different planets so like brahma's 100 years is a very long period but still it's 100 years so similarly we have our 100 years which is uh, human 100 years then dogs has their 100 years cats will have their 100 years so dogs 100 year may be 17 years for us cat cats 100 years may be 15 years for us so and the ants 100 years may be 2 weeks or 5 weeks or depending on the living entity you know the definition of that period changes so continuing among all the planets in the spiritual sky there is one supreme planet called as goloka vrindavan which is the original planet or in the abode of um, planet in the abode of original personality of god at sri krishna so that planet goloka is the the residence of krishna he lives in this area in the goloka goloka planet as swayam krishna and his different um, plenary expansions are available or they they live in this uh, vaikuntha realm there are four handed form of krishna here in the goloka krishna is two handed form like our form like also jesus christ says in bible man is made in the image of god so god has a two form two handed form so we also have a two handed form 
continuing the discussion all of this information is given in the bhagavad gita and when we go through that verse by verse we will see in details all this we will repeat this information uh, till it sinks in you know sinks our and uh, till we understand it properly and we are given through its instruction information how to leave the material world and begin a truly blissful life in the spiritual sky so this information about the material world about the spiritual world and the process to get out of the cycle of birth and death in the material world it is all given and now the description of the material world is described in 15th chapter as it's a reflection of the spiritual world <coughs> so in the 15th chapter of bhagavad gita the verse which talks about is uh, this verse uh, that urdhva moolam adha sakham asvattam prahur avyayam chandasmi yasya pranani yastam veda sa veda vit so this comes in 15th chapter of bhagavad gita this the meaning of this verse is that the real picture of the material world it is the reflection of the spiritual world so there is a spiritual world which is eternal and it is existing it is sanatana sanatana word which we have understood earlier in the in the introduction so this material world is just like a reflection so in the reflection when we see the the tree which is kind of on the edge of a lake and when we see the tree in the water the tree is upside down so here it this picture very nicely depicts uh, this picture is is drawn by tyaga chaitanya prabhu he's done a very nice job and he has explained what krishna is explaining in this um 15th chapter like couple of verses in the beginning that the the original tree is there and then he's comparing the reflection to the desire and you know there are many descriptions given here you see and like all these numbering systems that one is the reflection on desire so the reflection on the water is considered to be the desire and then there is a root of the tree and the root of the tree is compared to brahma loka and then the tree keeps on going down so similarly the branches are upper and lower planets the leaves are vedic hymns the twigs are sense objects uh, the tips of the branches are the senses the fruits are dharma artha kama and moksha and then the living entity actually gets involved in the material world and then it hops like the we understood the example uh, of jiva there is a bird which goes from one part of the tree to other part of the tree to enjoy different fruits uh, if you recall you know we we studied that in the introduction earlier you know in the earlier sessions so that living entity is actually his entity's involvement is it's going from one branch to another branch to taste different different fruits and it is not satisfied with one fruit then it goes to the next fruit right and, and then the whole thing is nourished by the whole creation is actually nourished by the three modes of material nature which is the goodness the passion and the ignorance and then uh, krishna explains how to get out so krishna says the only way to get out of the tree is through the process of detachment detachment in this material world so krishna explains that uh, the whole chapter is called as purusha uttam yoga purushottam yoga so when we understand this tree then by the as the, the verse is saying that in asanga sastrena dridena shritva so you cut the tree you de- cut the tree means you detach yourself from the tree how the detachment is possible detachment is possible by the process of knowledge we gain knowledge about ourselves we gain knowledge about krishna and then we see how this working things are working in this material world how things are going on 
you understand those things and then by the process of detachment detachment doesn't means giving away things you know doesn't mean that you leave your home and you know krishna never advised that to arjuna to give up everything what he was doing in fact in the beginning of bhagavad gita krishna arjuna didn't want to fight so that's how the bhagavad gita begins he put he gives you the argument like he gives some valid arguments why he doesn't want to fight and then krishna narrates the entire bhagavad gita so we have to be engaged in activity you have to stay in this world you have to remain part of this world but when we act then we have to act with knowledge and that's the whole study of bhagavad gita how to act in knowledge so the beginning process is what we are doing right now we are studying bhagavad gita and we are trying to understand those that knowledge which is given by krishna and then when we un- uh, understand this knowledge uh, and this knowledge you know it's n- it doesn't happen overnight we we learn it one time then we l- repeat the knowledge we repeat the study so studying is actually i'm going to cover after the introduction how to study bhagavad gita uh, and um, the repetition of this this study you know you study it one time you study it another time you, k- you keep on repeating then as you as we study more and more we understand it better and better and then we start making connection with the things and then we start the seeing the things in relationship with krishna so with that knowledge when we act then that is considered as detached detached acting and this is called as nishkama karma yoga by krishna means you act when you are acting with knowledge and that is nishkama karma yoga which is a, a detailed discussion in the first couple of chapters at least chapter 1 to 6 is focusing on that that aspect of how to act in this world and remain detached so action need not be stopped but action can be done in a attached way or at action can be done in a detached way and when you perform the same action in a attached way it has a different result but the same action when we do it in a detached way it has a different result okay so that is what we will going to study in bhagavad gita so as the heading says this is a banyan tree the material world is a perverted reflection of the spiritual world so the spiritual world is eternal and it is ever existing and this material world is temporary and it is it comes is into existence for some time it stays and then it grows and then you know things happen in this world and then finally it is destroyed again and then uh, again the creation process starts so that's how it keeps on going in cycles now let's read what chila prabhupad is writing um, in the in the description of this in in the introduction right so in the 15th chapter of bhagavad gita the real picture of the material world is given it is said i have already read the verse here the material world is described as a tree whose tree whose roots are upward and branches are below so we saw in that picture you know that um, sorry um yeah so this tree is the spiritual world this part of the tree and this is the material world and this is a reflection which we are seeing in the water and when we see the reflection this part of the tree is the root of the tree so that root of the tree is the brahma loka or brahma ji's planet so if we take this diagram into consideration this can be considered as the root where lord brahma ji resides and then the trees come down where the branches and everything is here so we can visualize that way so when uh, we have experience of a tree whose roots are upwards if we stand on the bank of a river or any reservoir of water we can see that the trees reflected in the water are reflected in the water are upside down 
the branches goes downward and the roots upward similarly the material world is a reflection of the spiritual world the material world is but a shadow of the reality so reality means over, over here which shadow of reality reality means the real thing exists as a spiritual it is eternal it never vanishes it's always there that is always real and the shadow is there sometimes and sometimes no, not there because when the water is actually disturbed then we don't see the reflection so on when the water is disturbed that time it is not there but when the water is calm and quiet then we see the reflection at that that time it is there so the material world is but a shadow of the reality in the shadow there is no reality or substantiality it's like it's there it's temporary but from the shadow we can understand that there is a substance and reality so when we so let's say when we only see the shadow then we can assume then that there is something real because the shadow is based on the reality a person standing on the sun and when there if there is a reflection if there is a shadow so if we just see the shadow that means the person is existing so material world is like the shadow and the real person is like the spiritual world <coughs> so in the shadow there is no reality or substantiality but in the share from the shadow we can understand that there are substance and reality in the desert there is no water but the mirrors suggest that there is such thing as water so at least i have ex i have not seen in desert but i can see on the roads lot of time when we drive on the roads when it is the sun is very hot right on the head and then we can see actually some watery substance on the road but actually there is no water so similarly uh, there is somewhere there is water that's why we we know that um, that water is there but not on that road in the material world there is no water there is no happiness but in real water actual happiness is there in the spiritual world mm. so this is a brief description about the material world and then when we go into chapter 14 then all these things we can we will study in details right so now we understood that Uh, quite a bit last quite a few sessions we are talking about material world and spiritual world we are trying to understand in different ways uh, specifically through the diagrams so it gives us a some idea picture form or some kind of map it gives us a holistic picture of what's going on but now we we know the things and if we believe the words of bhagavad gita or believe words of krishna then um then we need to go to the next step so the next step is then how i am stuck in this material world my current position is i am there in the material world with th all these problems birth death old age and disease so how do i get out of this cycle of birth and death so krishna also gave this information in bhagavad gita very clearly explains how to get out of the cycle of birth and death so that is the next topic that getting out of the clutches of the material world and then going to the spiritual world so the next topic is how can we attain spiritual world the lord suggests that we can attain spiritual world in the following manner <coughs> bhagavad gita 15th chapter and fifth verse is saying you know i'm not going to read the verse right now that padam avyayam or the eternal kingdom can be reached by one who is nirmama moha what does nirma what does this mean we are after designation hmm. we are after designation someone wants to be sir someone wants to become the lord someone wants to become president or a rich man or a king or something else so this material designation is nothing but material identification identify ourselves with the body first of all and then on that body then there is some label that i am the president i am this i am that you know i am sir i am lord so when we identify ourselves as a body means we see everything only in terms of body we do not focus our um 
you know, focus our attention on the soul because we don't have information about the soul. But Bhagavad Gita tells the beginning knowledge of Bhagavad Gita or the starting knowledge of Bhagavad Gita is the soul. So Krishna begins uh, the the ground level information is about the soul. So then he builds up the whole thing on that. Or the foundation of Bhagavad Gita is on the platform of soul. And that is a knowledge which is very important to understand because soul is eternal and body is temporal. So normally we, we do things in this world which is for the body, for the temporary. But um, what Krishna is saying that you have to focus on the temporary also. It's not that you don't focus on that but more focus needs to be given or more importance needs to be given to the eternal. So one example can be seen uh, in this case, a Prabhupada gives this example is about a bird in a cage. So he gives the example like this that there is a uh, parrot in a golden cage. Right? And if you just you know clean the cage and keep the cage from outside very neat and tidy and you do not take care of the parrot which is inside, then what will happen? the parrot will eventually die. So similarly over here the parrot example is the parrot itself is the soul and the, the golden cage is the body. So we have to take care of both. We have to take care of the body as well as the soul. But more important over here is the soul. So this external designation is like the cleaning of the the cage is like the all this designation the lord or the sir or the king or president or whatever you know whatever designation we have bodily designation which we have are they false no they are not false but they are temporary this designation will only live with us till we are there in this body as soon as we leave this body this designation are all gone we start from zero in the next body and then we again focus on those designations so this keeps on going so if we want to get out and we uh, want to attain the spiritual world then the first thing is we have to understand that these designations are not all in all you know we have to also take care of the soul so as long as we are attached to these designations, we are attached to the body because the designation belong to the body. But we are not this body and realizing this is the first stage of spiritual realization. Okay. So this is the key. Our understanding of Bhagavad Gita. Second chapter verse 13 to verse 30. 1, 3, 2, 3, 0. To 13 to 30, Krishna talks about the soul that's where he starts instructing because prior to 13 verse 13 actually arjuna you know he surrenders to krishna that i am co totally confused i don't know what to do what is good for me what is bad for me i don't understand anything i'm con totally confused please become my teacher become my spiritual guide and teach me so krishna starts with this knowledge of soul and then he explains in that there is something called a soul in this body which is eternal and then from 2.13 to 2.30 he gives various descriptors to describe the soul gives description of the soul explains in various different ways after that Krishna doesn't talk about soul then he once the explanation of the soul is given in those verses then how to act on the platform of soul that is what is the rest of the Bhagavad Gita so you can understand like how important it is to understand this concept of soul and once we understand the concept of soul then we act on the basis of soul so from 231st onwards Krishna explains you know how person should act after having the understanding that he is not body he is soul so that is the whole description of Bhagavad Gita 
we are associated with three modes of material nature but we must become detached through the devotional service to the lord so in this world you know when we act uh, and when we act without the knowledge of krishna then we are actually acting under the modes of nature under the three modes of nature which is goodness passion and ignorance but when we understand about krishna and when we start acting uh, for krishna then that process is called as bhakti uh, uh, and that is devotional service prabhupad translated the word bhakti as devotional service it's not just devotion there is a service word which is very smartly added by prabhupad so bhakti is translated as devotional service very important to understand this particular point because if bhakti means you are going to do something for krishna something to please krishna so whenever you act we will have to act to please krishna uh, then you know we can come to his good books uh, the by that by doing service it's not just words that i love you i love you i love you no you love means you are going to show the love through an action you're going to do something for the lord like you know husband says to wife i love you i love you i love you you know keeps on saying the whole day but doesn't do anything for the wife then what it is good to say also but what good it is if you don't do something for your wife or vice versa wife says something and you know she just says but doesn't do anything for the husband so similarly when we love god we have to do something for him to please him so that is actually bhakti means you are acting for love and when we act in that way to please the lord then we are, our consciousness is purified and then it, it eventually we become we 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 situate ourselves into pure consciousness if we are not attached to the devotional service of to the lord then we cannot become detached from the modes of nature so this is a very nice line so if you want to get attached to if you want to get detached from the modes of material nature that happens automatically when we engage in bhakti designations and attachments are due to our lust and desire desire our wanting to lord it over the material nature yeah so this is the reason we actually we come here we want to lord over the material nature basically we want to enjoy ourselves everything so in order to enjoy then we need designations and then we are attached to whatever designations we get so this is a cycle which keeps on going as long as you do not give up the propensity to lording over material nature there is no possibility of returning to the to kingdom of the supreme the sanatan dharma so when we give it up we give up the attachment to these two things uh, or become detached from the designation then we can situate ourselves into the sanatan dharma that eternal kingdom which is never destroyed can be approached by one who is not bewildered by the attractions of the false material enjoyment so generally we are you know at- attached to the enjoyments in this world which are false false in the sense it is temporary is there but it is for short period of time who is situated by the who is situated in the service of the supreme lord yeah so that eternal kingdom is not destroyed or never destroyed and can be approached by one who is not bewildered by the attractions of this world and is situated in the service of the lord so by positioning our, ourselves to the service of the lord then that eternal kingdom can be attained one so situated can easily approach that supreme abode so one can ap- actually uh, do this Uh, or actually one can situate oneself in this world by getting rid of this designation and it is possible and then krishna gives us the ways you know he shows us how to do it and when we get rid of this designations and attachment then we can actually situate ourselves in this supreme abode actually right in this world we can situate ourselves in service to krishna so in this world by practicing in this life 
then what happens by the end of this life you know we are um, we become eligible to go to the spiritual world so these are you know some pictures which is showing the practices that can be done in this material world which will help us to move from this material world to the spiritual world so with this we'll stop here and we'll continue with our discussion in the next sessions shila prabhupad ki jai shrimad bhagavad gita ki jai gaur premanande hari bol